Jesus chose to sit upon the donkey. That's no miracle. It's nothing unusual. But the crowd was there, and the crowd came and, and uh, praised him and said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, how many rulers entered Jerusalem? How many rulers entered Jerusalem on a donkey? Nowadays, he'd come on a mer in a Mercedes. But one ruler, I said one ruler in a hundred. The seventh prophecy, Jesus foretells the destruction of the temple. He himself gave the prophecy. So Jesus said this in some time in 30 AD. And as Jesus was going out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, behold what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another which will not be torn down. In the fulfillment, about 40 years later in 70 AD, the Roman general Titus captured Jerusalem after a long siege. Titus had intended to spare the temple, but the Jews set it on fire. Well, for the Jews to revolt and then be crushed would be common. So I said, one chance in five. For the eighth prophecy, the Messiah will be crucified. In Psalms, David wrote 1000 BC, a band of evil men has, has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Well, Jesus, David didn't die this way. He died in his bed. His feet, were not hand, or his feet and hands were not pierced. Luke gives us the fulfillment. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified Jesus along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Our question is, one man in how many has been crucified? Well, I said one man in 10,000. The prophecy, nine. They will divide his garments and cast lot for his robe. Again, this is David speaking. They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Well, John gives us the fulfillment in chapter 19. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said. Let's decide by lot. We'll get it. Well, how many cr criminals would have a seamless garment? Well, you can make your own dis decision, but I said one in a hundred. The tenth prophecy, though innocent, he would be counted with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Isaiah said in 750 BC, he was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. He was numbered with the transgressors. Matthew gives us the fulfillment. They crucified two robbers with him. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own tomb. Well, how many executed criminals were innocent? Well, I said one man in ten. And how many innocent men or how many criminals were buried with the rich? I said one man in a hundred. That gives one in a thousand. Finally, the prophecy, after dying, he will rise from the dead. In Isaiah, again, it says, for he was cut off from the land of the living. He died. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. So there is a, there is a prophecy that he will be, come back to life. Luke tells us, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. And then... Paul gives us a summary in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living. Then to James, Jesus' half-brother. Then to all the apostles. Well, that's not something you can give a value to. So now we're going to look at the calculation. One man and how many men 
the world over will fulfill all ten prophecies? This question can be answered by multiplying all of our estimates. I don't have time to read them, but the answer is one chance in 2 times 2.78 times 10 to the 28, 28 zeros. Let us simplify and reduce the number by calling it 1 times 10 to the 28. The best information available indicates the number of men who ever lived to be about 88 billion. We'll call that 1 times 10 to the 11. By dividing these two numbers, we find that the chance that any man might have lived down to the present time and fulfilled all 10 prophecies by luck is 1 in 10 to the 17th. That's written out this way with 17 zeros. Well, let's try and imagine this. If you took the state of Texas and you covered it with dollar coins, one meter deep, three feet deep, silver dollars, and then one coin was marked electrically, and then I say, there, go walk out into the state of Texas and pick the right coin. That's your chance of picking the right coin by chance. In other words, it's no chance. I'm having trouble, just a minute. There are many more prophecies. These all show the prophet David or Isaiah, Isaiah as is the first witness. God causing fulfillment is the second witness. And God caused the disciples of Jesus to write it down. These are all proofs that the Bible is true and from Yahweh Elohim. The gospel says that Jesus came from God and paid the penalty for our sins. This is good news. The Koran has hard news. Surah Nahal 1661 says, if a law were to punish men for their wrongdoing, he would not leave on earth a single living creature. The problem is that the Koran states very clear that even those who have done their best are given only a maybe. In the surah of their narration, al qasas it says, but as for him who shall repent and believe and do right, perhaps, as I am, he may be one of the successful. In the forbidding at Taharim, it says, O oh, you who believe, repent toward Allah with a sincere repentance. It may be that your Lord will repent from you your evil do deeds. In the Surah of Repentance, at Toba, it says, Those only shall worship in the mosques of Allah who believe in Allah on the last day and observe proper worship and give alms and fear none except the law. And it might be that these are of the rightly guided. In the end, it's very lonely. If a person does not believe, then he's sure to go to hell. But if he does believe on the day of judgment, he stands there all by himself in front of a law. There is no intercessor or friend, and he can only hope that maybe, perhaps, he might be among the blessed. This is hard news. Where in his dictionary translates Asayan as it might be, it could be that, possibly, maybe, perhaps. In the Oxford Dictionary, it's English, English Arabic, perhaps, is translated as Asa'an. This may be true, but it's hard. On the other hand, the gospel has good news. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve, to give my life a ransom for many. Another verse from Paul the Apostle says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Straight out. This is wonderful good news. You read with me these fulfilled prophecies as proofs. There were 500 people who saw Christ after he rose from the dead. There are many archaeological finds confirm the Bible. I urge you, get a copy of the Bible, of the Gospel, read it. You will find good news for your soul. May God bless you all. Thank you. I now call upon Dr. Zakir Naik to present his response to Dr. William Campbell. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam 
على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين